The Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the first episode of the Edible Bean School. Uh, Throughout this new series, we're going to be sharing management tips and insights to help growers grow better edible and dry bean crops. Um, Today, we're going to talk about seeding dates and seeding rates. Uh, And we're going to tackle that topic from both Eastern and Western Canada, uh, two perspectives. And uh, we'll be joined later in the program by Dennis Lang from Manitoba Agriculture, We're going to kick things off in the East uh, with uh, some help from my first guest. He's Paul Cornwell from Hensel Co-op, the seed manager. Hi, Paul. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Bern. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And uh, as I said, great to have you on our first episode. Uh, Now, Paul, I want to cover a lot of ground today on rates and dates. So let's dig in. Um, So first question, Uh, when it comes to seeding rate, should we be thinking in in terms of, of seeds per foot of row? Yeah, that's an excellent way to start. We, uh, you know, it certainly depends on market classes. Small seeded beans are typically direct harvested, so they're going to be in narrower rows. So in a 15 inch row, yeah, you're going to be planting three to four beans per foot and uh, should give us that population of 120, 130,000. Yeah, so a lot of difference, shall we say, for the for the large seeded, you know, for example, the cranberry bean versus a smaller white bean or an uh, zuki bean. Absolutely. Absolutely. The larger seeded, the crayons and kidneys um, are typically going to be pulled. So they're going to be in a 30 inch row. Um, So you're going to be talking a lot less seeds per acre, that 85,000 seeds per acre. And uh, then you're probably closer to five to six beans per foot. Yeah. Now, what about um, planting conditions? When should we be thinking about upping or lowering the seeding rate? Yeah, dry beans, you, you don't really want to up the seeding rate too much because you're already planting them on your best soils. You're planting them in soils that uh, you don't want to, you don't want to crust. You don't want to be uh, planting in adverse weather conditions. Um, so generally, we're not recommending ever going higher rates. So lower rates can happen. Um, white mold is a big, big concern. And, and one of the management tools we can use is our planting rates and lowering our planting rates by you know, that 20% can uh, help reduce in your productive zones, uh, help reduce your uh, white mold incidences. Yeah. So, hey, let's uh, let's move on to uh, seeding dates. And I guess the first question for you is how important is market class when, you know, targeting seeding dates? Yeah, they, they vary quite a bit and it almost comes into maturity. So, crayons, um, the variety we're using in Ontario is really early. So, it can certainly be planted later um, in the season so that you're not, you know, you don't have any frost risk because the the, the maturity is a lot shorter than some of the longer day beans like the kidneys, that sort of thing. So, um, first week of June hits a lot of areas. The last week of May, I'm not... Um, not deterred by that whatsoever. Um, it, it all is planting conditions and uh, Mother Nature saying when the ground is fit, um, there's enough moisture there and, you know, we can get them out of the ground quickly. Yeah. Now, a lot of times we talk about soybeans, hey, let's get them in as early as we can, you know, uh, and, and take advantage of earlier planting. You know, does it pay to plant edibles early, you know, or do we, do we worry about those late frosts? Yeah, we, 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 we do worry about the late frost. The late frost can really uh, hurt your, your grade for pick and, and, um, and then your yields suffer quite a bit as well. Um, but we don't want to plant them early either. The, the frost early in the spring will really hurt them. Um, and getting them out of the ground emerged evenly is the most critical thing you can do. Now, Paul, we often hear uh, the, th- the phrase or the, the, the thought that we want to see our beans twice in the same week, you know, plant them and see them at emergence within seven days. Um, why is that so important? Yeah, it's just getting them out of the ground in, in perfect conditions, right? The, the, unlike soybeans, they're, they're not as photosensitive as soybeans. So they, uh, you know, at harvest time, if they come out of the ground two or three days later than its neighbor, you know, harvest timing for desiccation is extremely challenging. So planting them in ideal conditions, um, not having a heavy rain, 
and getting them out of the ground within that seven days sets the table up for a great harvest. Now, is there a sweet spot for planting, Paul? I mean, you know, we talk about that, you know, that first week in June, but obviously, you know, you talked about different timings here, you know. Uh, is there a sweet spot and, and why? Yeah, I don't think there is a sweet spot. Uh, again, you know, after, you know, the first last week of May, first week of June is the sweet spot, but that's a pretty big air, uh, time frame. And, you know, we certainly know that dry beans planted the last week of June can have fantastic results in southern Ontario as well. So as you move north and, and your climate, you know, is cooler, um, you know, it, it will affect your planting date a little bit. Um, but probably in the south, the biggest thing we want to avoid is the heat in the summer. So, you know, we know that August is going to be hot. And if you can get your uh, flowering times to kind of match up to a cooler part of the summer, that would be the best options. Now, final question, Paul. And, uh, you know, when it comes to planting edible beans, uh, people often say never race a rain. You know, why is that so important? Crusting. Absolutely. Like, they will not push through a crust. Soybeans can push through concrete sometimes, um, but dry beans just don't have any push to them. So they can come from deeper. You have to plant them in the moisture. Do that. Um, you have to get them out of the ground at the same time. Do not push a rain, race the rain. Um, if you have any crust in your soil, they will not push through it and you'll be planting again. So some great insights from Eastern Canada and Paul Cornwell there. Um, now we're going to head west and connect with Manitoba Ag Pulse Specialist Dennis Lang. Hi, Dennis. How's it going? Oh, it's, it's beautiful here. You, as you can tell today, I'm wearing my nice Hawaiian shirt to take in this minus 30 degree temperatures that we're having today. Well, you'll be out in the field uh, seeding and planting before too long, and let, let's talk about that. Um, you know, Dennis, from a Western perspective, how do edible bean seeding rates differ from what we see in Eastern Canada? Well, I guess what we look at for seeding rates is, is we have maybe a little bit more of a difference with respect to solid seeding versus row crop. So when you're looking at, say, a 30-inch row spacing um, on a pinto bean, um, you're looking to, to put down somewhere around 75,000 seeds per acre is what you're looking to put down. Um, when you're looking at that same row spacing in uh, with uh, navy beans or black beans, you're looking at that 110,000 um, seeds per acre. And then when you change it and flip it over to solid seeding, which is anything less than 15 inches, then navy bean seeding rates go up to somewhere around that 130 to 140,000 seeds planted. So you tr you're trying to obtain that 125,000 live seeds. So there are some differences depending on, on – even within Manitoba, we do see some growers that – uh, vary their seeding rate a little bit, just depending on the type of equipment you have and what kind of mortality you have with, with the seed that you're using and the equipment that you're using. So uh, there are some differences from Ontario to Manitoba that way. Dennis, when it comes to seeding rates, are there any areas where you think growers can do better? Is there any, you know, any areas where they could really fine-tune and improve? I think the biggest thing that you need to understand, and I've, I've mentioned this as we've been talking, so the things to distinguish is talk about how many seeds per acre you're planting and how many plants per acre that you want to emerge because those are two different two different things. So if a grower were to come to me and say, well, I'm going to plant 125,000 live seeds uh, on my navy beans, well, what does that mean? That means that 125,000 live seeds, that's the kind of the stand you want to end up with. So you're going to have to factor in uh, a slightly higher planting rate so that, you know, the factor in things like mortality and germination. So that way, when you, when it's all said and done, you end up with that 125 versus planting 125 and end up with like 70 or 80, which I have seen. And that, that causes lots of problems with weed control because your stands are too thin um, and then harvesting as well because the plants flop over. So those are the things that you really need to kind of keep in mind that, Bean seed is expensive, but it's probably the, the biggest investment and it's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck to make sure you have the, the correct rate that you're planting and factoring some of those other things I've mentioned earlier. Yeah. Dennis, when we talk about planting date, um, what does crop insurance data you know, tell us about the optimal planting date in uh, Manitoba? 
Well, for the, the deadline for crop insurance, for getting the beans in, if you're in zone zone uh, one, which is, you know, the Red River Valley all the way up through to Portage, uh, there you'd want to be in uh, in by no later than June 10th. That's kind of the, the kind of the drop dead deadline to plant. But ideally, when you look at the numbers, and uh, you can go online to MESC's uh, website, and there is some information going back uh, a few years where they look at where, when the majority of the uh, beans are planted and comparing that to yield. Ideally, that third week of May is kind of the ideal point. If you're below, if you're earlier than that, the yield is it, you don't reach maximum yield potential. And then after you get past that third week of, of May and get closer to June, then the yield potential drops off. So typically, I'll tell growers kind of in and around the May long weekend, uh, depending on how many acres you have to plant and what weather conditions are like, and more so, what are soil temperatures like? Because our soil temperatures are cold in Manitoba in spring. So planting beans on May 1st, um, dry beans on May 1st, really doesn't give you any kind of advantage whatsoever. Now, there's always a chance of frost, you know, uh, at the end of the growing season, uh, Dennis. You know, we, we saw some of that last fall. Um, is there a direct, I guess, correlation between planting date and maturity? Is, is that something growers need to think about? Um, if you're getting into that June time period, most definitely. If you're planting, you know, first, second week or first to second, third, fourth of June, um, and you're, let's say, you're outside your, your zone one and you're a little bit further west, then getting that frost on September 8th, as we saw this year, will have a more of an effect on your beans. But if you're planting in May and you get good sun and good moisture through the growing season, um, like in that May 20th to 25th range, those beans are going to come through. But you also want to make sure that you're not picking something that's too long for your region. Because that was the other thing that happened last year in, in the western part of the province is that you have varieties that are commonly grown in Manitoba. but And most years they would make it through without a problem. But last year... This variety is just long enough and had just enough moisture through the season that it stretched it out and then combined that with a uh, early September frost, had some higher picks. Anything in the Red River Valley, no, there was no damage at all because we, we we missed that first frost. And even if we would have got it, I don't think we would have seen much damage either. Right. Um, Dennis, final question for you. That's kind of like a hypothetical question. So, you know, there's a big rain in the forecast. Do I plant or don't I plant? And, you know, so the question is how many hours or days – do I need to be ahead of that rain? Well, the one thing I've learned in all my years of experience with growing dry beans, that if the soil conditions are fit to go and the weather conditions are fit to go, and maybe it's a couple of days early and they're forecasting rain, get them in the ground. Because what ends up happening, or at least start, because what ends up happening is, let's say you're going to wait for that big rain, and let's say you do get that rain, and it, and it or let's say it's only a two-inch rain that keeps you out of the field for a week or more, and you get a few little showers in there. All of a sudden, now you're into June. So that's kind of the way I look at it. You know, if uh, you can't predict what the weather's going to do, you know, like you could decide not to plant. I've had instances where it's been the opposite, where growers have thought, oh, well, wait till you get a little bit of moisture before we plant, and before you know it, you're pushing into June already. So I always recommend, you know, if field conditions are good and, and, and things are good, you get them in the ground and get them off to a good start. Um, but if you're too early in the season, then, you, you know, you definitely want to wait a little bit. So Yeah. Well, Dennis, hey, thank you so much for joining us on the Edible Bean School. Um, we love the shirt. It really brightens the day. It brightens everybody's day. Um, thanks again. We hope to see you in a field sometime soon. Sounds good. Have a good day.